Oh, what's going on, everyone? This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. You guys, it has been seriously six weeks since I've personally done a podcast, and I'm very excited for this episode, actually. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, been enjoying the last six episodes. Um, what I decided to do is that, you know, when we found out that, oh my gosh, look, there's six different categories, really, that most businesses fit in, almost all of them, actually, um, I was like, why don't I go find someone who's killing it with internet sales funnels. Let me go find that person. Let me go interview them and go dive deep with them. So anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you've not had a chance to listen to each of them, I would. Um, There is... What was cool is to think through, especially as the interviewer, watch all of these similarities that every one of them was talking about. Um, which was just uh, a lot of it had to do with just standard marketing principles, you know, but then also the very specific ways that like, hey, this works only in this industry or this works, works only in this industry. But what's funny and, you know, the more I've, I've talked with Russell and the more that I've uh, learned from him, um, he's taught me in, in many aspects that a lot of the times, some of the reasons why he goes and he crushes it so hard routinely over and over and over and over again is because he will take tactics and and use them cross industry uh uh, there's a great book oh my gosh i can't remember the name of it uh it's the story of the dude that was selling snake oil like almost literally and he made tons of money and people found oh man i can't remember the name of it crap i should have found it before i started this episode (laughs) but basically um uh uh what what he's what he's taught me is that uh hey look one of the best and it actually teaches that in the book too is that one of the best places to find um, the best working marketing tactics out there is actually inside of the medical industry, right? Uh, they've got weight loss, they've got you know different dieting, they've got liposuction, they've got procedures, they've got high ticket things, low ticket things, supplements, continuity, you know what I mean? They've got all this stuff, I mean, just over and over and over again. There is so much money spent on having the best sales copy and the best, you know, the best avatorials, the best creatives, the best, you know, so if you think about different ways to do funnel hacking, it's not always just, you know, yes, go find somebody inside your industry who's killing it, really red ocean, funnel hack them, and then take one step further, add your own th- piece into it, and now you have a new niche, right? That's how you have a new opportunity. Well, one of the other ways you can protect the niche and protect your business is to start studying cross-industry tactics. That's one of the major reasons why I'm telling you, like... <laughs> Even if it's one that you're like, hey, I did not think that at all I would get anything from that interview Stephen did before. But my guess is that you will. <laughs> and that you'll learn something and go, oh my gosh, if I was to take that from this industry and place it over here, I wonder if it would work really well. Now, be prepared, it might flop. But it's also uh, uh, um, uh, highly likely that you're going to, anyway, you'll, it's super fascinating, right, to start thinking of it that way. So um, anyway, so go out and start trying to find uh, different cross industry tactics that you could be throwing in there. Now, if you don't have a business yet, focus on the business, focus on creating something, get something out there, start selling, start asking for people's credit cards. Don't get distracted by that. Uh, what I'm telling you right here, but if you've got something up there right, and you know how it sells, you figured out what you're selling and you figured out how to sell it. Now it's time to start going cross industry, you know, or maybe it is start going out and, and how can you create yourself to be more, uh, um, hard to beat. Right? How can you create yourself even stiffer competition uh, um, or stiffer for others to actually beat? M- stronger marketing tactics, right? Make the offer even cooler. Right? There's a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of different ways. Um, it's actually part of a presentation I give in, so, uh, elsewhere that I should maybe show you here and ways to protect your niche. Um, but anyway, um, I recently, while I was in the middle of those interviews, I had somebody reach out, and it's always so funny to me, the people that react on what I publish. It's, it's hilarious. Um, you always get people who uh, love what you do, and it's super fun to hear from them. I, I, I love that. It keeps you motivated. And then there's always people that reach out, and you're like, did you get some kind of status by telling me how much you hated that last episode or something? <laughs> what was the motivation going on inside your head for why you felt you had to actually turn around and say, hey, that sucked, or I don't know, when I knew it didn't, or, or frankly, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 
So if you're out there and you're starting to publish, just just understand that. So I wanted to just tell you guys why I actually publish, why I do this, because a lot of you know, I did not want to publish for a long time. And I want you to know why you should be. And, uh, you know, I've written out several reasons here. I want you to know why you need to be publishing. Um, uh, Because this this individual reached out and they're like, look, (laughs) they said, they said, Stephen, which I totally disagree with, but I see what they're saying too. Uh, They said, Stephen, you're so much better interviewing people and you're terrible by yourself. I was like, "Mm, that's a strong opinion. I can see that. But I want you to know why I interview and I want you to know why I will have ones where I just teach my own thoughts. I recently was sitting in a room with JLD, right? John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. Great guy. Do not take anything I'm about to say as a, as a jab at him. Understand that it is completely out of a positioning move of what I'm about to say. I listened to him teach on stage and the man is amazing. He's done how many thousand interviews? Literally, that's his whole model. He interviews people like crazy, right? Like, like Letterman, you know, David Letterman. He just interviews the interview and 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 that's it. And I don't know any of his personal thoughts. And while he was talking, I had the very, very distinct thought pop into my head. I was like, you know, what's interesting because he started doing Q and a and every single one of the questions that was coming to him all had to do on how he podcasts. None of the questions had anything to do about business. I mean, or, or marketing. It was all about, hey, how the heck do you pull off recording that many interviews? Oh my gosh. Hey, how on earth are you able to get it done? And I'm not taking jabs at him. What he's done is fabulous. It's amazing. He's made it obviously a huge name for himself. But when Russell stands up, who also has a podcast, who publishes in many places, people know very well who he is. People don't ask him how he podcasts, meaning he'll get that question, but it's not the main topic. People don't ask me, Stephen, how do you podcast? They ask that, but it's not the main topic. They ask me, Stephen, how did you build that funnel that made X number of dollars and broke records? Or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, that's more the type of question that I get. I don't get questions about, I mean, more than two or three that I've had that has spurred a few podcast episodes where I teach you how I do my podcast and how I publish. But I position myself as wanting, I want people to know that, Okay, you know, I'm in a unique spot where literally all day, every day, I'm building stuff in click funnels in different industries and get to see cool places. You know, hey, this works well here. This works well there. This doesn't work there, you know, well here. That's a unique place to be in. And I was like, that's a unique positioning. I don't want to do interview after interview after interview where suddenly I become the guy who's just the interviewer, right? And so start thinking, I want you to go publish. It will change your life. Give yourself one year to publish, even just do it bare minimum once a week. And I promise you, your life and your situation and your trajectory, your trajectory will be in a different spot because of publishing. It helps you figure out your craft. And you know what? That person was right, especially at the beginning of my, of my podcast show. You can go back and listen to them. They're not that amazing. Like what I'm saying is good. How I'm saying it, my delivery, me, my message, my polarity, my attractive character wasn't that good. And I know that. And Russell knows that. And everyone who listens to it knows that. But the reason that I podcast and the reason that I do it is because it made me better. I've been doing this over a year now, which I'm very proud of. I had some great episodes, had some ones that probably aren't that amazing. But the reason that I podcast and the reason that I do a few shows you're right, kind of sporadic in between. I There was a season there where I kind of didn't do many interviews, but like I like to sprinkle them throughout. And I've got some great interviews coming up for you guys. Oh my gosh, it's so freaking awesome. I got some good, good, ones, you know, good ones coming up for you. But the reason I do is because I find my own voice by doing this. And most, one of the biggest issues that we find why, why people are not being successful. I'm about to go run a fat event tomorrow for three days. Why can I stand up? And I'm not saying that I'm as good as Russell or that I'm, you know, or, or I'm not trying to compare myself to him, but how can Russell Brunson let a guy, I'm just trying, I'm, again, I'm not tooting my own horn, but just think about this. I'm not drinking my own Kool-Aid. I'll never do, like, I, I'm very, very aware of that. Just think with me through this on the process. How is it on earth that the CEO of ClickFunnels, guy like Russell Brunson, could let a guy like Steve Larson stand up on his stage for three straight days and teach in his place? Well, it's because I've been practicing my own voice. Right, I, I've, I've figured out my message. I've figured out those things. I've figured out exactly. There's a piece of value I can now give. 
And at the beginning when I was publishing, I didn't have those things. So I went and I interviewed and I found my voice along the way and it got stronger and stronger and it still does get stronger and more intense. Um, uh, the power of publishing is ridiculous. It's amazing. If you think of it, it's almost like a, I, I mean, a lot of you guys know I like to backpack a lot. Um, I love being out in the mountains. It's just there's something about it. Uh, I think it's, for whatever reason, it's very uh, like a combination of calming to the nerves, but also I feel like there's a lot of great, you know, meditation, things like that you can do. I'm actually don't really know how to meditate, but I like the quiet and I, maybe it's close enough. I like, I like the quiet and I like to think while it's quiet um, and, uh, uh, you know, dream and things like that. You know what I mean? And uh, have little my own little visions on where I want to be and things like, like that's cool I like I really enjoy that um but uh just thinking about that every, anytime there's ever been a trail you know I've done a lot of high altitude backpacking where there's the oxygen's so thin the trees can't grow you know like the super super high mountains I love that stuff it's extreme it's hard it's very challenging it's very taxing on the body it's 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 fun um to go through something like that well every time and you might laugh and go uh, anyway, let me, let me finish that. <laughs> Every time we go climb a mountain, um, um, if there are moments where there's no trail, which might shock you, there's a lot of moments, especially high altitude, where not a, there's not a lot of people, humans that have been up there, like ever, you know what I mean? A lot of like, humans have gone in some of the places I've been, which is really, really fun. There's not enough feet that have hit the ground to create a trail. You know what I mean? And it's way harder to climb or it's a lot harder. It's, you got to be more careful. The footing is different. You know, you got to, it's more loose. It's, it can be more scary. And so when you're climbing up these mountains and you're doing this stuff, when there is a trail, it's so much easier. <laughs> Think of every episode that you publish like a brick and you lay that brick and you put it down there and just like, uh, just popped in my head just like will smith says you lay that brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid and you put it out there as best as you know how and and you just focus on that one not on the whole road not on the whole trail i've never actually hiked a mountain where there's a brick trail <laughs> but just for the analogy okay then the next you know then there's another brick and you lay that brick as perfectly as that you know and that's like another episode or another content piece or you've published something or whatever it is you've another communication piece has gone out there and you do it as perfectly as you can and you do the next one as perfectly as you can pretty soon you have a road does that make sense and it's easier for people to climb your mountain as you the guru on the mountain does that make sense it's easier for people to approach you when you have tons of episodes and you have tons of stuff published. That stuff doesn't go away. You know the SEO power behind the stuff that I've made with that? That's the reason that I do it. So anyway, that's just part of the reason. I just wanted to share that with you that I interview people because of the ridiculous value. I know I'm not an expert in everything, you know, or barely even in one, <laughs> you know? And so I go find people. I go find we've got great stories and I have them share their experience stuff that would take me their lifetime to learn also I just got my own so I go interview like crazy you know which is super fun usually I'll batch interview and I'll get tons of interviews done at once and I'll just kind of drip release them out um, and then there are moments where I'm like hey you know what there's a cool thing that I just learned about x y and z um, um, and you know what it has everything to do with funnel building why don't I share it with you you know right it's just my episodes of myself Everyone that you put out there is kind of like a brick. And guys, uh, it has helped. Someone can have a great new offer. They can have a great new opportunity. They can have uh, right a cause. But if they don't have the charismatic leader, which is heavily dependent on finding your voice, if they don't have that last aspect, it is very challenging to create a mass movement. It's very challenging to create a brand. You got someone super boring. I don't care. Guys, stereotypically, in college, professors, they know a lot of crap, right? But a lot of times, a lot of them are really boring, right? They're bored of their own message. <laughs> they don't have the attractive character or charismatic leader. And the ones that have that are the ones that really make you uh, turn into a new person, right? Or a challenger, whatever it is. And uh, so anyways, it helps you find your voice. Um, and then the last part here is um, the revenue that a podcast can generate is insane, right uh, last year um i had a single product generate 50 grand a lot of which was uh, akin or a lot of it came from the podcast there's no ad spend people found out because of this podcast listeners are typically buyers they're action takers they're the kind of people who are doing things when they're out and about right uh meaning they're listening to things when they're out and about they're proactive people they're not the kind of people that sit around and watch tv all day youtube audiences aren't really like that podcasters are right 
Facebook people, they're not usually like that also. They're kind of there for a distraction and for entertainment. Podcasters, though, if you're listening to this podcast, I know already that you're the kind of person who has dreams and goals and aspirations. You're trying to do something with your life, and you don't give a crap if someone else is trying to make fun of you about it. Does that make sense? That's the people I want to hang out with. So that's why I chose podcasting. Okay? The revenue that comes from it is crazy. You'll find your voice. You'll become better. You will figure out your own craft. I can't think of a stupid reason or bad reason to publish. So I don't care if some people, you know, just know that when you get out there and you start publishing, you're going to get haters. It's stupid. I don't know why. What the heck else are they doing in their day? I have no idea. But uh, that's why I publish. And I want you guys to know that. And uh, if you feel awkward, I feel so, so excited and so happy. I've had, I think, at least at least four people that I know who've at least told me that because I said, hey, go podcast, go podcast, or, or whatever it is, go publish, whatever it is that you love doing, they've started their own show or their own channel or whatever. They've started their own publishing uh, um, venue. And because of it, they've made money. Episode two, <laughs> you know what I mean? Lots of it. Life-changing amounts. And not just like one person that I know of. It happens over and over and over again. Publishing brings an insane amount of authority behind it. So anyway, it's getting late. I got to go to bed. <laughs> uh, I got uh, the fat event, uh, which if you don't know what that is, uh, it is a three-day event where basically we help you write out your entire webinar script. We build the webinar funnel. We help you create a new opportunity. The attractive character, the cause. I mean, every, every piece you can imagine. Uh, we've had many people uh, create, uh, mil- uh, have, you know, we actually really only started doing this back in February, but that was kind of just to a closed group. Publicly, we've only been doing it for four months. We've had several people make well over a million dollars uh, from that event alone. So I'm excited. It's always a fun group to go to. And um, uh, it's part of the Two Comic Club Coaching Program that I'm the head coach for, which is awesome, super fun. I uh, really enjoy that program, love hanging out with those people, but I got to go to bed because it starts at a few hours and I'm going to be on stage for a couple times for like 18 straight hours. So <laughs> it, they're long days, super fun. But uh, um, anyway, great stuff. So anyways, guys, hope you're doing awesome. And if you want to be interviewed on my podcast, I want you to go to salesfunnelradio.com. I'll be updating that site soon. I'll be updating all the stuff I'm doing shortly, but a little bit busy. <laughs> but go to salesfunnelradio.com, scroll down and click on the green button on the right, and it will record a voicemail straight off your browser right to me. And, um, you know, sell yourself. Uh, pitch yourself. Tell me your story. Uh, tell me what it is that you do. I'd love to love to uh, uh, get more stories and such on here. I've got already kind of a waiting list, but uh, it's exciting. So um, uh, we've already, we just, we were, not even a month ago, we're at 50,000 downloads. We're already past 62,000. Um, it's only been a few weeks. So, um, appreciate all you guys. You guys are all awesome. Um, and, and, and just go make a lot of noise. Okay. Whether it's publishing or whatever it is and know that uh, you'll get a little backlash from it, but who cares? Whatever. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to sales funnel radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today.